So here's the result of that. And you can see we've got an explosion over our background. You can see how the flame, you know, the color reaches out and everything. So the it's working fine to me. So what do we want to do? What changes do we want to make now? Well, for one, I'd like to make the background darker. Uh, you know, it's kind of it's it's kind of close to the smoke color here. I and mean, it's not. I can see the difference, but why not uh, make it pop more when it's so easy to do so? So I'm going to say the what's controlling the color of this? Well, really the we have the direct lights and we also have the environment light. Now I could just take all three of them and bring, I can multiply them down somewhat. So I'm going to do 0.5, leaving the actual volume light as bright as ever. But now the overall color of this thing is much, much darker. So that's pretty cool. What else do we want to do? Let us do a thing called Bloom. Bloom is basically it's something you see a lot in well, you see a lot in video games, you see a lot just in film in general. And the idea is we have these really bright areas here. It should kind of blur out a little bit. It that's just it's kind of an artifact from lenses. Some people think it's because it's lighting up like stuff in the air, like mist. It's not really that. It's it's an optics artifact called an airy disk, which basically just says that you would get this kind of wavy fall off when you have these particularly bright things. You can't usually see it until you have light that's bright enough to have that effect show up. So long story short, it's just basically an optical effect. And, and we can approximate pretty easily, kind of in the same way that we did the the actual scatter blurring itself before. But now we're going to kind of do it in 2D. So what I want to do is, right now, we're adding all these things together right here. I just made an add, which is pretty much identical to the layer thing set to add. I'm going to add these together first, and then add them in here. No difference. There's no actual difference still in that order of operations. But what this will let me do so now I can do something in terms of both of these at the same time. This is the brightness. So I want to use the brightness to make something happen. So I'm going to do another color correct after that. Put that, there you go. So still the same thing. Doesn't actually do anything or change anything. But now I want to make some blurs. So this blur. Uh, we'll start at, let's see, let's see what we get. This is basically just saying, you know, how many pixels wide should this blur be? There's a lot of pixels here. This whole thing is 1,280 pixels across. So we need some fairly high numbers to see something. So there's one blur. Then we'll do, let's do four of these things. I certainly don't need to see each of these individually. But let's do the kind of the model we did before. We had one size blur, and we'll have the next one be in terms of that one. So I'm going to say times two, right? That one's times two. This one will be times four, like so. And this one will be times eight. And added these together, you can use I guess I'll use a layer again. It doesn't really matter. I mean, add, I think, just only takes two inputs. So layer, we'll do an add. And again, we don't really need to, I mean, we can do the alpha or not. It actually won't matter, because we're just going to plop this on top anyway. But so there you go. We have a hot core here and a loose outside here. And then add it together, it looks like this. Probably too much. It looks like it's quite bright. So we're going to need a color correct here as well. But now we can add that in. I'm going to add that actually right here. So now our explosion, or I won't even actually, I'll keep it separate just to keep it, uh, I'll put an add down here. 
I'll add it right at the end. So again, obviously way too bright. So we just need to find out now, how much of this effect do we even want? So as we go down, that's starting to look good. Oh, I mean, that's obviously off, so let's go. So we expect to see it mostly right here, right towards the beginning, when we're first getting started. You know, later on, we won't really see much of an effect at all. This is only really there when it's bright, and we're only going to see it. And, you know, the, the brightness of the original incoming business here, man, so slow. The brightness of this is going to have the most impact on how much of this that we even see. But there you go. So we have a nice little bit of a bloom effect on it now that really helps it feel like it lives in that world. Or again, it feels cinematic. It feels like it's been filmed. So once again, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's run these files out. And so here we go. And now you can just feel that. It just feels hotter now. That glare makes it feel even crazier. And we could be done at this point. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It would actually probably be technically more accurate than what we're about to do. But uh, we're not quite done. There is something else I want to do here. I want to say this is super bright here. And that's not wrong, but it might actually be nice to see that detail. See how I turned, I made it, I scaled it down. I scaled the brightness down. It might be nice to just arbitrarily scale that brightness down on the glowing parts, on the emissive parts, just arbitrarily, just so that we can see them better. And this is something that you'll often be asked to do. Even though it is totally accurate to have the you know, camera's film or sensor get blown out by how bright that is, but people want to like see the detail sometimes more. So I would just say, come back to here where we were had them both added together, you know, the two flame things here. And I would just say, let's find, let's find a moment in it where, no, oh, I guess I closed the compositing one, but anyway, it was right around here that it's like the hottest, right? Like it's, it's growing to here and then this is like hot and large and then it starts to cool off from there, maybe to like 30. I liked I like this a lot. I like frame 30 a lot. So from 12 to 30, we might want to bring this down in brightness. Why is it being weird? Anyway, you get the idea. From 12 to 30 is where I want to bring it down at 12 and kind of have it ramp back to normal by 30. So we're at 12 already. Or rather, let's go to 30 first. And we'll keyframe. So I'm going to alt left click on Malt here to keyframe that. Again, you can always just go to keyframe, set keyframe. So I want it to stay as good as it is there already. In fact, let's look at the total output while we're doing this. But going back to 12, I want to bring this down some amount. So let's see. See, the lower we make this, uh-oh, <laughs> not negative numbers. Let's... Uh, there we go. There. I don't want it to completely lose its brightness. What if we tried 0.3? It's still bright, but it's less bright now. And it will go back to being more bright as it goes back towards frame 30. Let's see. Maybe this should be more bright. Maybe I'll put it back up to 0.4. I feel like I, I want to see some of that whiteness a little bit. So now I can kind of see some whiteness again. So let's try that. There's actually one more thing to do, which is if we look at our image here, and in particular if we look at the alpha channel, by clicking on this, if I bring the brightness down on the alpha channel, we'll see there's actually, it should just be a white rectangle, honestly. So there's two things we could do. One is we could either just replace whatever we have here with just pure value one white, or we can just actually fix our 
compositing itself. So let's do the second thing because it's, it's just good best practices anyway. So looking at back up here with the ground plane, now this does just look like a single white sheet, but if I press the I key here, I can inspect the pixels and I can see the value is four. It should be one. If I look at the original image, it's one. So as we started to talk about before, this add operation is adding all of the alphas on top of each other. So first off, turn that off. Press I and I can see the alpha is just one now. Okay. Second, let's see what this looks like. Looks like it's all one. Bring it down, it's still all one. So I guess this one was fine. And we did an over here, so we don't want to turn the alpha off for this. The over is, is fine. Uh, this last one though, same thing if I look at this, we're getting the alpha from the actual bloom over here on top of this. So let's come back here and say, well, we don't have that scope thing actually on this. So I'm just gonna say, let's not use that. I'm not sure even why to use that instead of this anyway. This is already doing an add. So let's make another one of these. Layer, add. I just try to be too clever for my own good by using that, that very, very specific add thing instead of using the all in wonder here. So same thing, add without doing, adding the alpha. And it should be that this is good now. The reason why we have to fix this is, you know, if we ever needed to composite something else, put this on top of something else, or even if you brought it into a program to assemble these frames into a movie or something, it might multiply the alpha times the color so it'll just get darker. But in any case, it's fine now. So let us save that. Or rather, not just save it, let's render it out.